I, I think maybe Globetrotting Adventure was overdoing it just a oh, smidge. Thank you very much. Thanks. Let's go with something more practical. Like a bank heist. I figure just about every janitor that's ever worked anywhere near large sums of money has got to come up with his own idea on how best to steal. I mean, they're there, regularly observing schedules or security procedures and stuff. And of course, he'd have lots and lots of time to think. It's got to at least cross his mind, just once even. I'll bet in nine out of ten bank robberies, a janitor was involved. They're like the power behind the throne in a matter of speaking. Wait, so our traveler is some sort of savant janitor bank robber? Well, yeah. What does that even have to do with the trunk? Well, if you just let me finish, you might be able to find out. Anyways, our janitor isn't too creative, but he has seen a lot of Bond films, namely Goldfinger. So, after some time to think and a few internet chemistry lessons, he walks into the bank one day with a 10-step plan to rob the place without firing a shot. Step one, wait for the president to start the vault inspection. Step two, Wheel one of those huge garbage cans into a vent and mix the chemical recipe. Ah, Goldfinger, that's the one where they use the sleep gas to rob Fort Knox, right? Yeah, exactly. Which brings me to step three. Make sure the gas is filtering through the building. Step four, turn off the security cameras. Step five, well, step five is simple. Rob the bank. Step six, ditch incriminating evidence. Step seven, hide the money in an old fashioned steamer trunk. Step eight, sell the trunk to an antique dealer. Step nine, get grandmother to buy the trunk and hold it. Step 10, return to the bank and breathe deeply. Boom, the perfect crime. And then what? What do you mean, then what? Well, if it was the perfect crime, why didn't the guy come back for the trunk? She's got a point. Look, I don't know. Uh, he had an allergic reaction to the sleep gas and went into a coma. <laughs> a coma. So then the old lady just stuffs the trunk up in the attic and forgets about it? Uh, yeah, a coma. Look, he's mixing sleep gas in a garbage can. <laughs> this isn't exactly rocket science. What? Agatha Christie thinks she can do better all of a sudden? Well, I don't know about that one, but what I can say is I don't see why the owner of this trunk has to be some two-fisted adventurer or super thief or even a man for that matter. Hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. you know, maybe she's some wealthy socialite drifting from gal at a garden party and is looking for something that her affluent life cannot afford. While walking the Pacific beaches one morning, she finds a body washed up from the tide. Next to the ragged figure sits a battered steamer trunk. Our traveler rushes down to the man's side, then, helping him up, escorts him back to her beach house. There, she watches over him as he recovers from whatever tragedy stranded him on that shore. However, as his health returns, his memory does not. As her guest is resting one evening, the woman realizes exactly how her attachment to him has grown over his stay, but how little she actually knows of the man himself. So walking into the guest room, she pries open the chest to look inside. It may as well have been Pandora's box. Stacks of money heaped next to expensive jewelry. She confronts him about the money. However, he's just as shocked and frightened to find out about the contents of the trunk as she had been. She knows she wants to believe him, but the whole situation becomes too much for her to process. The woman decides she needs some fresh air and goes for a walk. She weighs the facts against her feelings. Realizing that sharing her life with this stranger has given it meaning, she determines to return to her home and throw the money back into the sea. However, as she retraces her steps in the sand, Red police lights are seen pulling away from the beach house. The servant, concerned about his mistress, phoned the police about the man who, it turned out, was wanted in several states. 
Even though our heroine pulls every favor her station can provide, she still cannot free him and he's locked away in a federal prison. Wait, all this for the guy who touched her on the shoulder? <clears throat> so the traveler moves into a small house and spends her fortune in legal fees trying to free her love from his cell. She holds onto the trunk as it is the only memento left of those few carefree days that she fell in love with a stranger.